Ellen, she's incredible. She's awesome. Awesome. I love my mom. I don't, I don't, my mom is, when, when I was, uh, ornery, I guess would be a good word. <laughs> when I was ornery, you know, she, she got on me and she, she whooped my butt because I needed it. And then, and then when I needed her because I was down, she was always there. She always, you know, pushed me in the right direction, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful that she showed me the truth, and she showed me how to pray. She showed me how that I'm supposed to be in the house of the Lord, and I thank her for that. My mom, my mom is awesome, I, as, as I, I know your mom is awesome as well. And so, but today, let's just lift up our hands right now all over this house and just love the Lord and invite him into this place today. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here, to praise you, to bless you, and to lift you up right now. Jesus, we ask right now, oh God, do you be in this house today. Lord, have your will in your way, Lord. We ask that you would touch every Sunday school classroom, oh God. Touch the teachers, touch the students today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to touch pastors. He speaks to our hearts, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask right now that you would have your will in your way in this place, oh God, and saturate us with your presence and we thank you for it lord in the name of jesus we pray hallelujah hallelujah let's give him a hand clap of praise right now i'm going home with jesus in the twinkling of an eye and i've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky i may not know the moment and i may not know the day but i know that i'll be leaving when he calls this church away I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. called Calvary and the precious blood of Jesus that truth made faith for me I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye and I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky I may not know the moment and I may not know the day but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away well the captain of the vessel he's calling to get on board and the destination seven, safe on the crystal shore. Well, we'll meet again, our Savior, and our loved ones have gone before. There to live for all eternity. Thank God we're going home. I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. Day to be in the house of the Lord. If you have your Bibles this morning, praise God. Our kids out there was out there practicing, and and we're excited for them. And I want to thank God for all of our Sunday school teachers and uh, Sunday school teachers that are working so hard to teach our kids the Word of the Lord. Amen. God's Word. God's Word. If we can put a love in their heart for God's Word at this age, Amen. The Bible declares that they'll never leave it. They'll never leave it. Tramp the child in the way they should go. When they're old, they will not leave it. I believe, 
I believe in teaching our kids the word of the Lord. Man, I believe that today. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised today. Amen. Matthew chapter number 28. Verse number 20. It reads, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. I take great confidence today knowing that God is with me every day that I live. Amen. I take great confidence knowing today that Jesus never leaves me regardless of if I'm running as fast as I can down the road away from Him. God is already there. He's already there. Today I want to talk just for a few short minutes today on a lesson or a message entitled, Jesus Really Does Love You. Jesus Really Does Love You Today. It's a simple message. It's a simple message. Man, but I believe that we need to be reminded again this morning about how Jesus really does love us. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you, Lord. I praise you and I thank you, God, for all of your goodness to us, Lord. God, you're a mighty good God. God, you're excellent, God, in our life. Faithful God, Jesus, you're an awesome God, a righteous God, worthy of my best. Jesus, I love you so much, God, and I thank you, Lord, for all that you are in our lives. Jesus, I give you my praise. I give you this glory today, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that we could be a blessing to somebody. Help us, Lord, as we teach the word of the Lord. We pray in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone said in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. There has always been a question about if God really does love us or not. Um, God's love doesn't stop things from happening in our lives, though. I will tell you in this place today that, that, that uh, if you're looking for God's love to be found in just the blessings of life, then I will tell you that sometimes the curses in life uh, will lead you astray. But God loves us regardless of if it's, if it's sun shining out today, and I thank God for the sunshine. He loves us if it's raining, storming, or if you're in Hawaii right now and volcanoes are erupting. God loves you regardless of where you're at in life. If you are running away from God, and if you have made many, many, many mistakes on God and have messed up terribly in your life, I want you to know today that God loves you just as much as He loves anybody else. God's love knows no bounds. It has no barriers. It, it's, God's love is different from people love. Uh, we have barriers. We have, uh, we have things that, that uh, we, have, we have the end roads, if you would please. God knows no end road. His love will chase us from the very depths of this earth. His love knows no bounds, for the Bible declares that His love will even, even love us when we're in His house and will also love us when we're in the pig's pen. God's love is never failing. God's love is always existing. But I've been in ministry for a while, and, and I've learned that, that sometimes when people make mistakes in life, then sometimes people feel that God quits loving them. And I will tell you today that that is the farthest from the truth, that, that God loves you even when you do make a mistake. There's nothing on the outside of God's eyes that He can't see. Uh, you, there may be things that you may do behind doors. God sees through doors. There may be things that you, you do behind brick walls. God can see through brick walls. And God still loves us. He still cares for us. He still is there for us. And, and, and we as, as, as church folks, we have to understand today that God loves the sinner just as much as He does the saint. God loves the people that had, I, I want to give you just the extreme level that I can. God loves the heroin addict just as much as He loves the Holy Ghost addict. 
You see, that is the power of God's love. God looks down upon us and He sees what we can be. Oftentimes we look at ourselves and we look at what we presently are. But God looks at us and He doesn't look at us as a mistake. He doesn't look at us for our past failures. God looks at us through the eyes of love. If He had to do it all over again, God would have died all over again just for you and just for me. Why? Because He thinks that we're worth it. God, God's love is never failing. Again, it's never failing. But I've learned in ministry that sometimes people walk out on God as if it was nothing and many, many turn because they feel like they feel like perhaps God didn't meet their expectations. Uh, maybe some problems that, 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 that you were sure God would fix and somehow God did not fix it. Or perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps God was in the process of fixing it, but God wasn't moving quick enough. And we wanted God to move instantaneously with, with what we had in our life. And I will tell you, we can challenge the love of God sometimes. But the fact is, is that God loves us unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally. Regardless of where you are at today, regardless of your ethnic background, regardless of your color, regardless of your past, regardless of your history, regardless of what people know you as, or regardless of what you know yourself as, God loves you unconditionally here today. God died for you. The Bible declares that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God did not wait till we had everything right before He died for us. God said, I'm going to die for you right in the middle of your mistake. I think you're worth it. <coughs> and I believe it's important today that if we could grasp the, the enormity of God's love for us, our faith would, I believe, skyrocket out of this place. And I will tell you this morning that I believe, I believe that, that the church in some aspects has done disjustice to, to the world because in some way, somehow, God, God, God loves the sinner just as much as it does the saint. But some way and somehow, why is it that when someone messes up, they feel like they have to leave the church? We have to change that mindset. In fact, when you mess up, the first place you need to go is back to the church. Go back to the loving arms of God. I believe if, if the world understood this one principle, that when you mess up, it's time for you to go back. God's arms are still wide open for you, and they're still wide open for me. This is important for our lives today because somehow in some way, we think that God only loves us when we're doing great. <laughs> and I will tell you that is the furthest from the truth. God loves you just the way that you are. But He loves you so much that He doesn't want you to stay the way you are. He loves you so much that He wants you to come out of sin. He wants you, He loves you so much uh, that He wants you to lean upon His everlasting arms uh, and to be held by Him. Uh, he loves you so much that He wants you to build your family, your life uh, upon the, the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Uh, he loves you so much that He gave His Word for us uh, to live. He gave us a compass uh, so that when we leave this life that we can go and be with Him forever and ever and ever. He loves you so much that for every one of his kids. Uh, right now as we speak, he's building your mansion in heaven right now. He's working. You're under construction. And as soon as all, the last bit, the last mansion is built, God loves us so much that he's going to blow the trumpet and we are going to be with him in the air. He's building our house. He paid for our life with his blood. Our salvation is purchased with his blood. His spirit is inside of us. He gave us everything and God just wants us to give it back to him all over. He loves you this morning. He loves you this morning. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 it says let your conversation be without covetousness and be and be content with such things as you have for he, for he has said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's the power of his word. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Have you ever had someone in your life today? And I believe we don't raise your hand because I believe I'd have more hands. We wouldn't. Uh, but you ever had someone in your life where you disappointed them and then they just left you? They said, I'm not going to talk to you no more. They just disappoint you. Or, or one of my all-time favorites, in a world of social media, uh, you may have posted something or liked something that they didn't like. And so next thing you know, they've deleted you off their friends list. You go back and you type their name in like, man, did they leave Facebook? Or that? And then you find out they just left me. <laughs> they just left me. 
And, 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 and here's, here's the thing about this. If you judge God's love compared to that love, then you'll sell God really short. Here's the thing. You said what God didn't like. You did what God didn't like. You laughed at what God hates and God still loves you. That is the important aspect of understanding God's love. That he, he, the Bible said, when the Bible said, I'll never leave you or never forsake you, there wasn't an LOL on the end of it. God was serious. His mind was already made up. God wasn't just kidding when he said, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. God follows you to the church house. He follows you to the bar. He follows you to the drug house. God said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. God said, I'm not checking out when you check in the wrong place. I love you so much that I'm going to watch you hurt yourself because I want to be there so you can get help for yourself. If we ever understood how much God loved us, it would blow our mind. The Bible tells us uh, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son uh, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, let me tell you, uh, the Bible said in, 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 in that same chapter in God, God sent His Son to the, not, just not so he could, uh, he could condemn the world uh, but that through Him the world might be saved. Uh, can I tell you that God had the plan the whole entire time uh, that He was going to give up His life uh, so that we could find our life in him God made a way for us when we did when we dug a hole really deep down God put a ladder down there and said it's not not it's not my desire that you live here but my desire is that you make it upward that you be with me the Bible declares in his word that he reached out to us he gave himself for us while we were in our sin Christ died for us this is the power of a God that's hand is not short but God is for us. He's not against us. He's for us. To some, to some people, they think that God is out there to kill them and to destroy them. But I will tell you that the Bible says that His mercy endureth forever. Forever means forever. It doesn't change. It doesn't run out. God's mercy endureth forever. The Bible declares, He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. And if you think that God's just out to watch you do wrong let me tell you the good news the Bible says he says I'm a God that I'm slow to anger I'm slow to wrath I'm quick to mercy but I'm slow to anger God's not he's not here to punish you God's here is to love you and to give you another chance and to lift you up in his arms of love today The Bible declares in the book of Isaiah chapter 59. I love the book of Isaiah. Probably one of my most favorite, my most, my, my most favorite writers. He said, Behold, the, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, he says, your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you. I will tell you right now that God has not changed. His ears can still hear your prayers. His eyes are still looking upon you. His heartbeat is still towards his son and his daughter. Let me tell you don't let the devil tell you that God's forgotten about you. God remembers you every moment of every day of every second. God is ne God will never forget about you. God's, you're in God's mind as we speak. God wants you to love him because he loves you. But from the beginning of time till now, there's one thing that separates us from his never changing love, and that is sin. God's love, well, God will love us even while we were, we were in sin. But sin does something to us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, it says, For the wages of sin is death. And we stop there. But the Bible says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Even though we make a mistake, there is a Lord that's already out there that says, I'll forgive you of your mistake. God's will is not that we die in our sins. God's will is that we live in His love. God's will is that we live 
in his love today. And I, I, I want to preach this today. I was just yeah. say, Lord, I, I've got thinking about just about, about a couple of weeks ago when I knew I was going to, I was talking about the preachers. Man, I said, Lord, what if we could ever understand God's love? Because if we could ever understand God's love, I'm telling you right now, every time you made a mistake, you'd always run back into his arms again. I, I am a father. I want, my, I want my boys, three boys, three boys. Good Lord. Three boys. I had a, had, had a guy come to my house the other day, and if, if you knock on my door and you're trying to sell me something, I'm going to talk to you. I'm, I don't, I'm going to talk to you. I don't care if you're, like yesterday, a Kirby vacuum cleaner salesperson. Praise God. <laughs> they didn't get me. <laughs> Or if you're there selling steaks, come on in the house. Let's talk about it a little bit. I'll buy some steaks off you if the price is right. Or if you're Jehovah's Witness, come on in. I like talking to Jehovah's Witnesses. I listen to them for 10 minutes and I take their picture and we still talk about Jesus. Praise God. In fact, I've got me four, Je- four Jesus pictures from Jehovah's Witness. I want to thank him today for the, those pictures. I mean, <laughs> his great picture. Good conversation. But I was talking yesterday, and we was talking, and, and, and just so happened, they came in and gave me, gave me their whole pitch. And, man, I love, I love Sunday school. I, I like to talk about this stuff. But they came in, and, and they showed me the Kirby vacuum uh, sweeper. Man, this thing is sweet. I mean, this thing is incredible. I mean, this guy, I mean, the carpet's only four or, five, four or five months old, Brother Mark. I mean, it's brand new carpet. Guy comes in with this Kirby, and he puts this little white linen thing in that little suction thing, and he's, he's running that, that, that nice vacuum on my carpet, and I'm looking at this white thing, and that white thing turned like dusty. He said, man, you got a dusty house. I'm like, my God, according to that, I do. He said, I bet you got allergies. I'm like, man, either you're a prophet or you can see the bulging in my eyes. I don't know. I mean, the eyes certainly didn't give it away. I don't know. Uh, and so he's, he just keeps on running that vacuum. And like 10 of these little pads later, I mean, I'm looking at dust. I'm thinking, how are we alive? I don't know how we're alive. And, and, and the time, that, and the time that, they, that they were coming in, my father was dropping my boys off from his house and I thought he'd get out of his car and help me, but he just drove off. <laughs> and finally, 20 minutes later of watching this guy suck dust away from my carpet and suck dust away from my couch, which my couch is fairly new as well, Brother Mark. I don't know what's going on. I look at him, I'm like, hey man, what church do you go to? He said, and, and I was amazed by the story, he said, he said, well, really, we used to go to a Pentecostal church in Cleveland. He's like, I've had many people tell me and prophesy over me, said that I'm going to be a pastor, but I've not seen that happen yet. And so his first 30 minutes was him sucking dust out of my carpet. But the last 20 minutes was me telling him about how Jesus never gave up on him. Now, I'm gonna, i got to fill you this in. The price started out at $1,800 for a vacuum sweeper. And he, after, after he said that, I thought, my Lord, I, what I think, I told him, I was like, man, I hope it does dishes as well, because I'm not paying $1,800 for a vacuum sweeper. He looked and said, well, I tell you what, because it is Mother's Day and you want to give it to your wife, I was like, I'll, I'll give you a good deal for $9.99, and if you let me take your old vacuum sweeper, I was like, man, that sounds great, but I'm not paying, I'm not paying one cent over $200. And he looked at me and said, well, there's no way he's going to, he's, he's, he, my boss gonna, is going to give that to you. I was like, well, well it's been nice and talking to you. I was like, it really has, because I'm not paying one cent. And of course, his boss, he brought his boss in the house, and I talked to him as well. And, and, and lo and behold, yes, it is true, I talked to him about Jesus, and I didn't buy no vacuum sweeper. I mean, he took it out of the box and hooked it up and everything and looked at me in the eye and I, I almost felt his compassion. I mean, he tried every approach, but I don't know, this callousness. I just, you know, 200 bucks or nothing. You know, he, he chose nothing. So anyway, but he got Jesus. <laughs> this person was a, was a backslider. Said he was prophesied over to be, to be a pastor, to be a preacher. And I got to talk to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you today, as I told him yesterday, that God is still in love with you. 
Although you may have walked away from this whole entire thing, although you may have been Jonah and you're running away from the will of God, God is faster than you. In fact, the, the book of Psalms, I believe it was David who wrote this. He said that grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Every time you make a mistake, God's right behind you at your heels saying, all right, I can pick up that mistake. I can heal you where you're hurting. I can bless you where you've been broken. God is the master. He's the master and love and mercy and grace and I tell you today in this class if you could ever get a hold of how much he loves you then you would never run away but you'd always run to his arms and God will always catch you our sin takes us away from God and you can learn this even from the very beginning of time Adam and Eve the Bible said man they had it all I mean, they had everything. They was naming animals. They had the whole world to themselves. They had, they had all the food they wanted. And the Bible says they listened or she listened to that old serpent. But I'm not going to go there because it is Mother's Day. But I'll just say this. But, 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 but they, they sinned against God. And the first thing that they did when God was looking down upon them is the Bible says they hid themselves from God. They hid themselves from God. Every time that there's sin there, God's love doesn't change, but it changes you. God still loves you exactly the same way, but it changes you. Sin separates us from God. And most people don't choose to, to fall in love with Him because they know in their heart they got to give away some stuff. But I'm telling you this place today, don't you ever forget that Jesus loves you beyond your mistakes. He loves you beyond your problems. He loves you beyond your disappointment. He loves you beyond your history. Others they may remember, but God says, I cast it as far as the east is from the west. God loves you unconditionally. God still is just as much in love with you today as he was way back then. His love for you never changes. Why would we not want to love a God like that? Why would we not want to fall in love with the God that loves us unconditionally? And I will tell you in this place that sometimes it is, it is a trust issue. I was, uh, I was youth pastor for, for 10 and a half years and every now and then when we'd have a little, uh, you know, riffs and raps in the, in the youth group, we'd just bring out the stepladder, Brother Shane. We'd bring out the stepladder and we'd play this silly game and, and, and where the young people would get on the ladder and they'd have to trust the kids that we'd be catching them behind. Come on, how many knows what I'm talking about here? I mean, you're looking at me like I'm preaching something crazy. They'd, they'd, just have, to, they'd have to trust. They'd have to put their hands this way. Trust. And, and, and the theory was is this, is that if you could trust the people to catch you, then you're not afraid to jump. I wonder in our spirit if that's why sometimes we don't jump fully into God. Because we don't believe that God will really catch us. I will tell you in this place today that I don't care if you're dirty from sin. I don't care if you got a black heart from mistakes. I don't care if you got a confused mind from, from fear. I will tell you that wherever you jump, God will catch you. There is no height that's too high for God's love to catch you. There is no depth that's too low for God's love to catch you. God loves you just exactly the way that you are. The Lord said that I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto me said by the Father but by me. God was telling us this, that Jesus, Jesus is, loves you just as much today as he did way back then. Him. He gave us the way. He gave us the truth. And he's still giving us life today. But it must come at the arms and the hands of Jesus Christ. I will tell you in this place today that God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. You are very much in his mind today. Sin has separated us. But God's love reconnects us again. God's love reconnects us again. The Bible says in John chapter 10, it says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. 
and shall go in and out and find pasture. And then it says that chapter, that, that verse, brother, it says, says you gotta go and you gotta go into Jesus. And the next the next scripture, it says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy, but it don't stop there. It says, I am come that ye might have life and that ye might have it more abundantly. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. God said the good shepherd would rather die for a sheep than live and watch a sheep die. God gave his life for you so that you could live. He laid his life down so that you could live. That's the power of God's love. God loved you so much that he bled for you. He died for you and he'd do it all over again because he knew your mistakes before he died and he did it anyway. He did it anyway. That's the power of God's love. I want to pastor a church. I want to pastor a church that shows people God's love. When people come in this church with mistakes and problems and a history, I never want our church to turn into a church that's judgmental or cruel or we just point out people's mistakes. I'm telling you, I want to see with God's eyes. I want to see that God loves them just as much as he loves me. God died for them just like he died for me. And when God remembers me, he's also remembering them. If God can forgive Adam and Eve, then he can forgive them. If God can forgive Paul, Paul, or rather Saul that turned to Paul, then God can forgive me. God love, loves, knows no bounds. It can reach to the gates of hell and pull anyone out. It can reach anywhere and pull someone up. God loves everybody. This world tells us, this world tells us that only perfect people go to church. And I will tell you, in pastoring for eight years, I strongly disagree. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because this pastor is not, not, not perfect. But I am forgiven. That is the power of what God's love can really mean for your life. I want God's power working so strong in me. I want His power to be so strong in me that I can look the person on death row and I can believe that God has a plan for their life. I want God's love to be so strong in me that I can look at what the, what the society calls as the deepest sinner. And I, I want to be able to see the most lovingest saint. But we'll never get there if we don't understand God's perfect love. I will tell you in this place today that God's love is not like people's love. You have to prove you have to prove yourself to some people for them to love you. Come on now. Think about that. I will tell you right now that you can leave this house today and you can repent of your sins. You can, you can say, God, forgive me of everything that I've done. And I will tell you that God will not love you more. He'll love you the same. Because God never quit loving you when you made a mistake. He never quit loving you. He was always, he's always has been in love with you. That's the power of God's holy divine word. We understand that God loves us while we were yet doing wrong. He loved us the same. I want us all to stand. Where do the broken people go? Can I tell you the broken people should feel that they can go to the house of the Lord. The broken people should feel that they could come back to the house of God and feel loved again. You ever, you ever, uh, you ever had someone in your life that maybe had a word or two against and you didn't see each other for a while and you kind of got meeting up together again? You ever had that awkwardness about you? Like what are they going to say when, I, when, I, when we meet? You ever had that before? Can I tell you this place today? That God loved you through it all. When sometimes we were blaming God for what happened to us, God still loved us. When we were not doing what we need to be doing and we knew better, God didn't quit loving us. He still loves us this place today. 
When we left God and said, Lord, I'm going to forget about the church. That's where all the crazy people are at. Lord, I'm not going back there no more. Can I tell you right now, God still loved you when you walked away. God may have let you walk away. He may not have chased you and said, Brent, you better get back here or else and smack you upside your face and say, you better get back there. No, God loved you regardless of where you was. He loves you right where you're at this place today. God does not love me more because I'm a pastor and a preacher than He loves you. He loves us the same. He loves us the exact same. Sin separated us. But God's love and His blood gave us a chance to choose Him all over again. The truth of the matter is, is this. Is that God loves you so much that He wants to be a part of your life. You say, Pastor, that's awful simple. Good, I want to be simple. God loves us so much that He wants to put His Spirit inside of your soul. He wants you, He wants you so bad that He's willing to chase you all around the world just to be connected with you all over again. God's willing to walk in uncomfortable places just because He loves you so much. God's willing to, to watch it all. Just because He wants you to be everything that He wants you to be. God's love is unconditional. God's love is unconditional. Can I tell you today in in closing, Peter, the Apostle Peter, I mean imagine imagine eating breakfast with the Lord and the Lord says, one of you are going to deny me three three times. And in one, one chapter it said, Peter... Peter said, well, Lord, it ain't going to be me. And I think it was the book of Matthew. He said, well, Lord, my allegiances are are greater than everyone else's. It ain't going to be me. So he compared himself to other people. And then, I don't know about you, but if if, if I was Peter and the Lord had prophesied that to me, I'd go get me a Motel 6 and check in and like, I'm not not surrounding myself with people. I don't know. I don't know. Because I wouldn't want to do it. But Peter, they finds himself warming his hands around unfamiliar fire, mm-hmm. cursing, denying God three times, cock crowed three times. Jesus has died. He's rose again. Mm-hmm. And Peter uses the all too famous words. He said, I go a fishing. Mm-hmm. Well, Peter, according to scripture, you ain't been fishing in three years. Mm-hmm. What makes you now want to get back into the trait? Because I'm going to tell you why. Because when God brings you out of something into His marvelous light and sin separates you from God, it's a natural tendency to go right back, as the Bible said, as a dog returns back to his vomit. To go back to the exact same place that God delivered you one time before. And when Jesus rose up on the scene, I'm, I'm just, I just want to give you this and we're going to end it. Jesus rose up on the scene. Jesus does not call him Peter. Yes, he calls him Simon Barjona. Peter means a rock. Simon means a pebble. The names are very similar, but they're very different. They have very distinct meanings. Very, they're, they're a little bit different. If you don't look, if you don't look at them closely enough, you start to think that, wait a minute, that's just the name. It's the kind of, no, it's not. It has two different meanings. Peter, you became little again because you forgot about who your God was. You let your mistakes separate you from God. But let me tell you, Peter, although you say you're going to go fishing, God knows exactly where you are. And God rose up on the ocean and he's calling calling Peter out. He's telling him, you got to get right. It's time for you to get back to the place that God wants you. You see, Peter thought that his mistake separated him from God. But God said, I'm going to chase you down and I'm going to to let you realize that I'm not mad at you. I want you to know that I still love you. And today, God does the same thing in our class this morning. God wants each and every one of us to know that He really does love you. He really does love you today. Praise God. I want us all to pray right now. If your head be bowed right now, I want you to begin to pray. I want you to get a hold of God's love today. 
I want you to get a hold of God's love today. I want you to know that He loves you so much today. He loves you. You say, Pastor, this is simple. I'm telling you right now, you've got to believe what I'm preaching about today. Jesus loves you so much that He is willing. He is willing to chase you down anywhere. He is willing to accept you just as you are. He's willing to, to bring in imperfect people. And although He being a perfect God, He's willing to love you exactly where you are. And He still wants you to be blessed. He still calls you a son. He still calls you a daughter. He's not forsaken you. He's not forgotten about you. He still is in love with you. He is still in love with you today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I love you back. I love you back, Jesus. I love you back, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Jesus, Lord. I thank you, God, for your love for us. Thank you, Lord, for looking down upon us, God, when we were messing up. God, you were still our masterpiece. God, when we were failing you, God, God, you failed us not. Jesus, God, you're still faithful to us, Lord. I love you, Jesus, and I praise you, Lord. Come on, church family, if we could just pray a little bit right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you back, Lord. I love you back. Jesus, you're a mighty good God worthy of all the praise that I've got to offer, Lord. God, I realize because you love me so much that I can, I can get back up and pursue you all over again. God, my life does not have to be over, Lord. But Lord, you've already seen it, God, and you still love me anyway. You still love me anyway. I love you, Jesus, and I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It was amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved. A rich like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Sing it again. It was amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. blind but now I see one more time could we raise hands to Jesus and love him hallelujah hallelujah I love you Jesus I love you Lord I love you back Jesus hallelujah 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 Lord I love you so much Jesus thank you for loving me Lord bless us in the name of Jesus we pray Praise God. Everyone said in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Shake someone's hand and tell them that Jesus loves you today. Lord bless you. We're going to keep the Sunday school kids in the classrooms because they're going to start the second service off. So you don't.